So in the spirit of trying new things out and experimenting with different techniques, we're gonna do just that. I've gotta build that door right there, so that's gonna be replaced, but I'm gonna do it in a different design than I did that Craftsman over there. This will be a five panel, and it won't only be a different design, it'll also be a different construction technique. That one was built traditional mortise and tenon joinery. This one will not be, this will be loose tenon joinery. And also, if you remember, that one was built stave core. This one will be solid wood. But the part I really need to dial in today is that loose tenon joinery. It's been done, it's a technique woodworkers have used for a long time, but I've never done it. So let's see if we can figure this out. So I've got these offcuts of Spanish cedar right here. This is what we're gonna use to experiment with, and these are left over from that door right there. And just like I did the mortises on that door, I'm gonna do it the same way. It's gonna be with the plunge router right here in this little brass pin centering jig. So these two little brass pins will center that router bit on the workpiece, and that's really all we need. Then we just plunge in with the router. So here's the parameters for that mortise. It's gonna go from this line to that line. It's two and a half inches long, centered right in the middle of this six and three quarter inch piece. So pretty easy, right? Just plunge the router in from that line to that line and don't pass them. Sounds easy enough, but I can tell you from experience, this jig, while it may get the job done, is not ideal, but it's what I've got right now. You can see right here, I got off track a little bit. That's not gonna affect anything, but I wanna talk about the struggles of this method. That actually happened when I was lifting the router out. I should've just let the bit stop spinning, but I didn't, so I kinda got off to the side a little bit. But you could just see like how much dust is in here. These routers, you know, my dust collection system is awesome, but this router setup where it's plunging like that, it's not, good at dust extraction. So all that dust gets filled up in here and it's throwing it around and it's just bad. Like it, it's just everywhere. So I can't imagine what it would be like without the dust extraction on. That's a problem because it gets in the way then you can't see like where your lines are where you need to stop. Thankfully, I stopped good right there and stopped good there. But I really have to focus because this thing has so much room for human error because of the way of this setup. So those brass pins are centering it. So you've got to hold it, like lock it in right there up against the workpiece. You can you know, hear it lock into place and you've got to hold it there. So if you're not holding it tight in this position and you let it kick back a little bit, like I did right here, that's gonna really cause problems with centering this mortise on this piece. So not only do you have to keep it locked in there, it's a little awkward to keep it steady because you know, it wants to tilt a little bit. But those are just some of the problems that come up. So this really isn't ideal, and that's why I may be leaning towards a domino or something when I build the doors for my house. But with that, let me get this cleaned up and we'll try to make a tenon for this. Basically what I'm trying to do with this video, guys, is justify to Ashley why I need the domino. And when I show up with it later this week, she's not gonna wonder like, oh, do you really need that? Yes, I do. Look, this. It's gonna take forever to build all the doors for our house. And I'm thinking white oak. I don't know, it's, the domino's sounding pretty good right now. So we'll have to wait and find out. So I've got this off cut of walnut right here. And this is an off cut from the walnut window gym that I built for that opening there. And yes, I did build a walnut window gym. I don't know what I was thinking. I just got all excited. It was before I got my machines and I was trying to just do stuff, but. Anyways, this is an off cut from that. And I made that mortise two and a half inches because this is just over two and a half inches. And this will be a pretty cool looking spline. Spline? No, tenon. I don't know why I always call these things splines. I think I'm thinking of like hardwood flooring, how you have those splines when you reverse and go the other way. But yeah, loose tenon. So I've got the table saw here. We're gonna cut this down to two and a half. I've got a round over bit in the router table. And let's see if we can dial this in. 
All right, so here's what we've got here. This obviously is not gonna go in because it's a square peg into a round hole situation. So that's not gonna work. So we need to round this over. Now I will say this, I got some feedback on my first door and a lot of people were saying I should have just rounded over my traditional tenons and made them fit into this mortise. That would have been a little bit more tricky because you know, it's attached to the styles and rails. So that, I don't know. I mean, I probably could have just rounded it over with like sandpaper or something, but this is gonna be a lot easier because I'm just gonna send this through the router table on all four sides with the round over bit. And this thing should really just slide right in there. But this is gonna be a lot easier doing it this way versus, you know, when I did that last one, I took a chisel and I basically squared this up. So I just brought that there, chiseled all that out and so on and so forth and just made this be a square peg into a square hole. So we're gonna do it reverse this time. So we'll go to the router. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and just send it So I'd say I got about an inch deep. So something needs to change here. And it's a lot easier to change the floating tenon versus the mortise. Cause I could just send this through the planer and take a 16th off. That's, that's not a big deal at all. But I, ideally I would want to do that before I round it over the edges. So they're all equal. Or what I could do, I could just go a little bit past these lines, barely. All right, let's see if that helped any. Yep, that did it. So just going a little bit wider on these and that actually probably be a, a better idea because when you go to glue something together, you know, you'll have a little bit of wiggle room for square, but once you clamp it up, you know, all those cavities are basically gonna be filled with glue and it's gonna lock that in there. Yeah, this should work. Try the other side. Yep, that'll do it. Yeah, that's a really good fit right there. Plenty of room for glue. Just throw some glue on there. Boom, we'll be good. So I don't really see the need to cut another piece and try to join them together. All I would need to do is measure that right there, which is an inch and three eighths, multiply it times two, That'll give me two and three quarters. I can cut these tenons. These floating tenons will be two and three quarter inch long. And I realized too that, you know, on a piece like this, the tenon should probably be a little bit bigger. But again, this is just my first one. So there you have it guys. There's my first loose tenon joint right there. And I'm pretty proud of it. So I've got 12 more of these to cut. I gotta go get the lumber right now. And this is not gonna be one where I take you guys through every single step of the process. We've got a lot of work to do. I'm actually going to look at my neighbor's house right now. She has some boards that are rotting out on the back over there. And she said, hey, do you know any good carpenters? I was like, I, I don't know if I know any good ones, but I might be able to help you out. <laughs> She's, she knows what I do, so it was kind of a joke. But yeah, I'm gonna go check that out. Got a lot of jobs coming up, some job site videos. We got a 10 story building that we're working on the 10th floor, installing some crown, but it's an old building and the elevator will not fit the crown. So I've got to get creative and try to figure that out. Maybe like pass it up through the balconies without hurting anyone. So we got to figure that out. But all that to say, I'm not going to go into real detail on this. I want to, just don't have the time. If you guys want to look at my other door video, it's going to be similar. I go into more detail. I think I have like six videos on building that door because I was trying to document it all and learn. I will show you when I glue this up, it's gonna be Spanish cedar and mahogany. Same look as that one, different layout, five panel. So anyways, thanks for hanging out with me on this one, guys. I really appreciate it. Leave any comments down below, any tips, tricks, all that good stuff. I'm a newlywed to woodworking and the honeymoon is just starting. So I'll catch you guys on the next one.